The Charge Syndrome Foundation Speaker Series. CHT7 Genetics and Testing. Presented by Dr. Krista DeGoose. Why is getting a charge diagnosis such a challenge? So I think some of the challenges of getting a charge diagnosis are uh, that, first of all, it's such a variable disorder. So no two children with charge are the same. They can have similarities. It can be very recognizable to walk around here and see lots of children with charge, uh, but still no two children with charge are the same. And it be, it's, that makes it very difficult to say, this is what charge is for a clinician to then say, okay, so this child m might or must have charge, becomes much more difficult if it's such a broad clinical picture. And also, the, there's, a, there's a very wide spectrum of children who have very typical charge to maybe slightly less typical charge to people who have a couple of charge features uh, but may actually have a charge mutation. So you would call them charge syndrome. And I think it's important to realize that um, it, charge remains a clinical di diagnosis and, and genetic diagnosis can help, but it remains a clinical diagnosis. The other thing that can make it hard to get a clini clinical diagnosis or a di diagnosis of charge syndrome is that, especially when children are very young, so when they're newborn and they're in ICU and they may be, they may be critically ill with a heart defect or other things, um, you, you don't have that full clinical picture yet. You don't know whether they, you don't know that they have a coloboma. You don't know that they have vestibular dysfunction, because you are unable at that point to do the tests. Um, so you're 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 swimming blind or you're flying blind or whatever. Um, uh, and it it's not until all those puzzle pieces come together that you can make the clinical diagnosis. Um, and that leads to a lot of, uh, or that can lead to a long diagnostic journey. One thing that can be helpful is to do genetic studies. Uh, the good thing about that is you can get a fair bit of clarity if you do find a mutation, but we know that 10 to 20%, depending on um, what kind of group you take, don't have, of, of children with charge or clinical charge, don't actually have a CHD7 mutation. So even that fails as kind of a golden standard. There is no golden standard to say this is charge syndrome. Why is CHD7 genetic testing important? I think genetic testing can be important for a couple of different reasons. I think the most obvious one is if, if a child or if a person with, uh, with, uh, uh, with features of charge doesn't meet clinical criteria or maybe does meet clinical criteria but has a lot of other things that we don't recognize necessarily as typical for charge or don't know occur in charge at all. Because um, those children, uh, having a genetic diagnosis can really help say, okay, no, so this is charge. We can stop searching now. We don't have to do all these other studies and we have clarity. Or maybe actually they don't have charge, they have something else and that doesn't necessarily mean that you then have to, to take away the label or say you cannot access services for, for, for people with charge, uh, it just means that you have an extra layer of information that you can then use to help a child. So you can do, uh, maybe you have differences in workup or follow up uh, for that particular uh, syndrome that are slightly different for charge. So that, that can be very helpful. Um, another reason to do CG7 analysis, even in typical charge, um, is uh, that even there's a lot of overlap in syndromes, so even for children with typical charge, you may find a, a surprising diagnosis, but that chance is rather small. Um, some people just really like the clarity of it. Uh, it can really be kind of a nice end to a, to a diagnostic journey, but I think it depends uh, where you live and, and what the, the, the financial ramifications of testing are as well. Another very important point is that if you are looking to access reproductive services in your uh, in your next pregnancies or in your family planning, so prenatal diagnosis or even pre pre-implantation uh, diagnosis, you, you really need a genetic diagnosis. You need to know what the exact um, mutation is that your child, the, the exact cause of, of, of your child's features or charge syndrome or whatever it is. Because if you do not have that genetic diagnosis, none of those options are available uh, f uh, for you. And as long as you don't have them, none of those options are available to you. What information do you get from CHD7 testing?
One thing to really remember is that uh, a genetic diagnosis does not predict anything. It doesn't tell you how your child's going to develop. It doesn't predict what kind of features they'll have. Uh, we, we know very little about what, the, the, what causes the differences in Charge syndrome between all the children, um, uh, and genetics is certainly not the answer to that. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, there can be a difficulty in, in, in getting a diagnosis or, or being clear about a diagnosis, is that 10 to 20 percent of, of children with with charge syndrome or charge features, depending on what group you take, um, don't have a CHD7 mutation, or we cannot find the mutation yet. And we're not quite sure which it is. Some children may actually have a, a mutation that affects CHD7 that we're simply not clever enough to find yet. Some children may have another diagnosis uh, that causes something very similar to, to, uh, to charge. Um, but it's certainly not the case that, that a genetic testing a will rule out charge, uh, and I think that's a very important point to make. Clinical features come first. The clinical picture comes first. Another difficulty with, with uh, genetic diagnosis or genetic analysis is that um, we are all very different people, and that comes in part from uh, different variations that we have in our DNA, and that means that many of those variations are completely natural. They may occur in you and not in your parents, but they are not they do not cause conditions or disease or anything like that. They just me make me different from you. Uh, and that means that we can find variations in CHG7 that do not cause charge. We can also find mutations or variations in CHG7 where we don't know what they do, where we are unsure whether they cause charge. And that can be a very difficult, uh, that can be very difficult news to, to get because uh, here you are doing this genetic uh, analysis to get clarity or to get, you know, to get right at the answer or to have some sort of definitive answer. And, uh, here there is, and you get this answer that is just full of unclarity again or uncertainty again. What is the chance of having another child with charge? One question we get quite a lot is, what if I've already had a child with charge, what's my chance of having another child with charge? So a, a recurrence risk, if you will. Um, and that really depends on the parents. It, it depends on you. and. Uh, if neither of you have any features of charge, so you don't have any hearing loss and uh, puberty was a breeze, or at least you, you enter puberty on your own and you don't have a cleft palate, um, and there are no features of, of, of charge at all. And I do encourage you to go ahead to someone and, and have that looked at because you may not recognize or know all the features of charge. So if you, neither of you have any features of charge, um, m most likely uh, the mutation was completely new in your child and that would give you a recurrence risk of zero. However, it doesn't quite work that way because in some people the mutation is only present in some of the cells. So your child has a mutation in all of their cells um, and that's why they have charge syndrome. The mutation can have occurred in the in in their in the sperm cell or the egg cell or the embryo that that, that uh, grew out to become your child, or it could have been present in some of your sperm cells or some of your egg cells, and there is no way of testing for that. If we call that mosaicism, if someone has uh, is a carrier of, of, of a mutation for CC7 in some of their cells but not all of their cells, and depending on how many cells that is, um, if that is very low, you wouldn't expect someone to have any features um, because it wouldn't disturb anything in development or at all. Uh, so you can be a carrier of a CC7 mutation in some of your cells without having any clinical features of charge. And you cannot test for that because we cannot test all of your cells. Uh, so that is something that is always a, an unknown part of, of, of the genetic risk. And that means that if you do not have any uh, features of charge, um, your recurrence risk is about two to three percent to account for that very small risk that actually you have, you are a carrier of, of a CHG7 mutations in some of your cells. If we test, uh, if, if you maybe do have some features or you have, um, you have been tested and actually we've been able to, to tell that you are a mosaic 
uh, for, uh, for that mutation. That's a very rare thing, but it does occur that we can, we, we can actually um, uh, test for that. It's, it's very rare that we can, we can find it, but if we do find it, uh, then your risk is a little bit higher, and it's very difficult because we cannot predict how high that risk is. It can be anything from a couple of percent to 50%, like someone who is a full mutation carrier. What is the chance of having a child with charge if one parent has charge? Now, if a person with charge syndrome uh, would like to have children, um, their uh, chance of having a, a charge with child syndrome is about 50% or is 50% for every additional child. So, and that is because they are a carrier of the CAC7 mutation on one of their two CAC7 genes. We have all our genes, most of our genes, almost all of our genes, we have double. We have one set of genes that we get from our father and one set of genes that we get from our mother and together that makes us, that makes us who we are. Um, and in charge, one of those two CAC7 genes is broken and they either uh, give the unbroken functional gene on to their child or they give the mutated uh, gene on. And you cannot really know which one will be um, passed on. So that's a 50% chance. It's a one in two chance. It's uh, flicking a coin. Genes don't have memory. So if you have three children and you have charge yourself, you have, you can have three children with charge, you can have zero children with charge, or you can have anything in between. So it's not like, oh, I had a child with charge, now I'm going to have a, 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 a typical uh, child. That's not the case at all. It can be anything. Can you test a pregnancy for charge? One of the things that's often offered to people who have a child with charge is in a subsequent uh, pregnancy, to, they are offered genetic testing. Uh, or I think um, a lot of people are offered genetic testing uh, in general. And I think one thing to be very aware of is that regular genetic testing for trisomies or, uh, or, or other general testing that is done in, in the general population does not test for charge syndrome and it does not test for the mutation that your child would have may have had um, and it will not show um, show charge at all uh, so if you are interested in that if you're if you're wishing to pursue that um, you need to know the mutation of your child or rather your doctor needs to know the mutation of your child and then you can uh, specifically look at that mutation for that uh, subsequent pregnancy um, and that is the only way to genetically test for, for charge um, in your next pregnancy. Um, but it's also very important to keep in mind that even if you do that and you do get a positive result, so you do get a result that this child is also a carrier of that mutation, it does not follow that your child will have the same condition because no, child, no two children with charge are the same and that same thing goes in families. So it's, you cannot predict uh, what the future for that child will be um, and uh, there is a limit to what we, can, what we can really tell with genetics. For information and resources about charge syndrome or to make a donation, visit chargesyndrome.org and click the links in the description below.